Just look at these. These are absolutely wonderful. They're a little pair of Regency cut glass bottles. And to be honest, I don't know what they were used for originally, but I can tell you this, they are exquisite. The spherical bodies are all hand cut. And when we look at this body, you can see they're almost like big diamonds and they gradually get smaller and smaller as it twists its way around the body itself. And then we come up to the lip here and you can see again this very fine, what we call cross hatching, the strawberry cut. I take out the stopper. It's on the stopper. It's on the upper part, the finial part of the stopper. And then you've got this conical top here. Very sophisticated. On the underside of the bottles, you can see this lovely star cut base. Again, all hand cut. And if you look very, very close, you can see some what we call nibbling just around the edge here. But to me, that's acceptable because these pieces were used. And bearing in mind that they're you know, over 200 years old, and um, they've been been used. So a little bit of wear and tear is acceptable. But to realize how good this cutting is, I have to show you something like this. Now, this bottle here, this is Victorian, made around 1880, and it's known as a hobnail pattern. This bottle would have come from a tantalus but as a single use, people use it for their wine or port. The cutting is good, hand cut. Again, if you rub your hand down here, it's so finely cut, you could almost cut your hands on it. It's, you could lacerate your hands. But when you look or compare how fine the little pair of Regency ones against the Victorian, the Victorian ones are suddenly clunky. It just doesn't add up to the same quality of workmanship. So it's good, but we're going to put it aside because these are little jewels. It's a Regency around 1820, and I'd love to know what they're originally for. Were they for perfume or were they very grand ink bottles? I'm sure somebody will tell me.